the year 1967, the United States of America, among 106 other countries, sign into law the Outer Space Treaty. It was signed prohibiting nuclear, biological, or chemical weapons from being placed or used from Earth's orbit. What they didn't count on was the U.S. Air Force's most simple weapon yet, a tungsten rod that could hit a city with the explosive power of an intercontinental ballistic missile. During the Vietnam War, the U.S. used what they called lazy dog bombs. These were simply solid pieces of steel less than two inches long, fitted with fins. There was no explosive. They were simply dropped by the hundreds from planes flying above Vietnam. Lazy dog projectiles, aka kinetic bombardment, could reach speeds of up to 500 miles per hour as they fell to the ground and could penetrate nine inches of concrete after being dropped from as little as 3,000 feet. The idea is like shooting bullets at a target, except instead of losing velocity as it travels, the projectile is gaining velocity and energy that will be expended upon impact. They were shotgunning a large swath of jungle raining bullet-sized death at high speeds. This is how Project Thor came to fruition. Instead of a few hundred small projectiles from a few thousand feet, Project Thor used a large projectile from a few thousand miles above the Earth. This early Cold War project would have seen large rods of tungsten, a high-density, high-strength metal often used in armor-piercing munitions, literally falling down from the sky onto targets on Earth. Pointed rods around 20 or 30 feet long and several feet in diameter, similar in size to a modern day telephone pole, would have been sent into space via rocket and housed on satellites where they then would have been dropped onto hardened targets like underground bunkers. The idea was originally conceived by Jerry Pornell, a science fiction writer and space weapons expert sometime in the early 1950s while employed at Boeing. These tungsten rods could travel at hypersonic speeds of Mach 5 or greater when dropped from orbit, ultimately reaching 10 times the speed of sound. These so-called rods from God would be so completely devastating, they could totally forego any explosive payload, be it conventional or nuclear. The rod itself would penetrate hundreds of feet into the earth, destroying any potential hardened bunkers or secret underground sites. More than that, when the rod hits, the explosion would be on par with the magnitude of a ground-penetrating nuclear weapon, but without the nuclear fallout. It would take 15 minutes to destroy a target with such a weapon. The trouble with a nuclear payload is that it isn't designed to penetrate deep into the surface, and the fallout from a nuclear device can be devastating to the surrounding area, and even to potentially friendly areas. According to an expert in the defense aerospace industry, the quoted cost to fire anything into space was $10,000 per pound, with 20 to 40 cubic feet of dense tungsten weighing in at 24,000 to 50,000 pounds. The cost of just one rod was prohibitively expensive. The cost ranged from 240 to 500 million dollars per rod, which was unimaginable during the Cold War. These days, not so much. The Bush administration even considered revisiting the idea to hit underground nuclear sites in rogue nations in the years following 9-11. Interestingly enough, the cost of a single tungsten rod for Project Thor, known as the Miniman 3 ICBM, was $7 million in 1962 when it was first introduced, which translates to roughly $68 million in today's dollars. Cost is ultimately what ensured that this science fiction-esque idea never made it off the ground. Aside from the cost to produce such projectiles, launching telephone pole-sized rods 1.7 times denser than lead would require rockets of massive scale, which would have been far too expensive for the time.